Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I hope everyone's having a great day. Today I'm super excited because we're doing another video with my 2022 GTI. And today we're gonna to talk about some Easter eggs or maybe some things you didn't know about the GTI or just in general, some helpful information about the GTI. So I wanna organize this video in three different categories. Um, first one's gonna be the exterior. The next one is gonna be interior. And then the last one is gonna be uh, driving corks. So let's first start off with the exterior since we're already out here. So let's go ahead and start here in the front. So one cork right off the bat is just the design of the fog lights in general. So if you guys don't know, Mark 8 GTIs have really cool uh, like built-in fog lights like right here. And um, they look almost like an X pattern at night. And I do have a night video posting on this car soon if it's not be up before this video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let's go here to the back. So if you look at the rear tail light, or I should say look at the car in general actually. Do you guys see anywhere on the car where it says that it's a Volkswagen Golf or where it says Golf anywhere on the car? You can see in the back it just says GTI. I even have my little license plate bracket rabbit GTI down there. Um, you see there's no Golf sign anywhere on this vehicle. But if you look in the rear tail light right here, you see a tiny little lettering that says Golf on it. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on the camera. No one will probably notice that. They'll probably just see that it says Volkswagen GTI on the back and they won't even notice that it says Golf on the side there. Let's go ahead and go over here to the back for another cork. Since I'm not used to Volkswagens or vehicles like this, like the way you open the tailgate is unique to a Volkswagen. So you push in the logo here. I know some BMWs have it too, but you push in the logo and then you open it that way. So if the car is unlocked, you just push in the logo to open up the trunk. There's no sort of button or anything like that. It actually uh, houses the backup camera as well. But if you open it up, you can see there's no backup camera in there. So I think it pops out of this little uh, tab right here. So that's really unique as well because when you put it in reverse, it pops up the logo for the camera. But when you open the logo up, you don't see the camera. When you're driving in the rain or whatever, you don't have to worry about the backup camera being all uh, you know, dirty and messed up and have water on it because it's always gonna be clean since it's underneath the logo. Another interesting cork on the back here is if you look at the rear diffuser, say if you go way down low here, you can see the diffuser has a hole in it right here. So I don't know if that's for like a European model or something, but I feel like that's very, uh, very strange how this diffuser has this big hole underneath it right there. All right guys, and before we go inside for the interior corks, I wanna show you guys the puddle light. So there's actually a little puddle light underneath the mirror right here that shines on the ground. And I'll pop up a picture since it's not nighttime right now what it looks like, but um, it looks basically like a, a texture of a golf ball, which is kind of weird. So I feel like that's kind of a cool little cork. It also says Volkswagen on the side there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Right, so let's go ahead and talk about this interior. So obviously I'm sure you guys seen all the YouTubers doing the reviews of the GTI and they talk crap about the interior and how it's so bad. But it's actually a really quirky interior and I think it's pretty cool. So let's first start off with the LED lighting on the interior. So up here we have touch sensitive LED lights. So you just press the button and it actually even makes a noise like in the gauge cluster when you press it. But you just press it, it slowly fades to bright. Then you press it again and it goes away. But the cool thing is that you can actually hold this like this and now it lit up dim so it's like dim now um, and obviously it's it's daytime wait for my nighttime video but um, you can actually hold it to make it dim so it's not full brightness so that's pretty cool and then if you press this button it turns on every single light in the car next up I want to talk about the touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel they don't work by just tapping it you actually have to push in so you don't have to worry about pressing the buttons while you're uh, driving so let's say you want to uh, turn on the heated steering wheel. You don't just tap it, because see that doesn't do anything. You have to actually press it, and then the heated steering wheel turns on, and then you can turn it off. So I like that they did it that way, because these buttons over here in the center console are actually um, touch buttons. So you just press it, and it pops up. So you can even press it twice by accident. So I kind of wish that they did the same thing for this middle area. Another cool thing is that the passenger side rear view mirror can go down in reverse if you have it enabled in the settings. So if you go to reverse here, you can see it didn't go down, but if you turn the mirror switch to the right and you put it in reverse, you can see now it goes down. So that's kind of a cool feature. So then you can kind of see uh, closer to the curb and like around the side of the car better. 
um, and I like having that feature on but for some reason when I have it on it seems like it doesn't go back to the right spot so that's why I haven't been using it lately for the last thing um, the interior is pretty normal other than the touch sensitive buttons I know people don't really like those but um, I want to talk about the shortcuts so you can actually uh, program shortcuts in your screen so you'll see the reviewers they'll go into like the settings and go through like a whole bunch of different menus to turn off trash control and to turn on the AC and stuff like that it's really easy actually so you just press this button in the corner here and you can program these presets so there's the AC turn it on and off there's auto start stop then there's the trash control system so if you want to turn off trash control press the button and you can turn it off you can do the sport mode or you can turn it all the way off so that's very easy you don't have to go through a bunch of settings like the reviewers will have you thinking and then another thing is if you go to climate control down here that's an easy access to the climate control so you can turn up the volume or I say turn up the fan speed turn down the fan speed do your heated seats all that stuff just from this screen here guys last up for the interior corks goes to the trunk and that is up here so you can see there's this weird uh, like cutout in the rear lift gate here learn from a Doug DeMiro video that this is actually for a uh, European warning uh, warning triangles so I guess in Germany or whatever they have uh, requirements where you need to have a warning triangle in your car so you can put those in there but for the US model it's basically just a blank open space on the rear uh, trunk lid here all right guys last up I want to talk about the corks that relate to the driving of the vehicle so first up I want to talk about the drive modes so we have a drive mode switch here to go through your different drive modes so you press this button here you can see we're in comfort right now it also shows on the screen comfort if you go to sport mode here that's obviously the sporty setting and it'll adjust um, like the transmission and all that stuff accordingly but one thing that's kind of weird is that if you turn off the vehicle and turn it back on it'll show that it's still in sport mode even though in reality it's actually uh, defaults to comfort mode so that's kind of a weird quirk of the vehicle is that you can actually put it in a certain drive mode start it up and it'll say it's still in that drive mode but really it's not so you would have to like let's say i were to turn off the vehicle and start it back up i'd have to go to the drive mode switch click comfort and back to sport for it to be in actual sport mode next up i want to talk about the clicking noise after takeoff so let's see if i can show you guys here so we're just going to take off like normal here go up this street i want to be quiet you guys hear those clicking noises so I looked it up online in the forums and everything and apparently that's normal to like the Volkswagen Audi group so when you just take off normally you're just gonna hear a bunch of like weird clicking sounds alright guys another interesting feature is um, if you go to normal mode so we're in comfort mode right now and we do some revs I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it anyway but in comfort mode it does no pops at all the exhaust is the same volume but it does no pops now if we go down here to sport mode and try it again hopefully you guys can hear that but it actually does like pops in the exhaust now so that's pretty cool um, I definitely like the pops I love how they're subtle they're not aggressive and crazy another core kind of adding on to that is listen to the engine noise Hope you guys can hear it but um, the engine literally and I know everyone says four cylinders sound like vacuum cleaners like as a joke because they kind of do this one literally sounds exactly like a vacuum cleaner and that's not really like anything wrong with it like I don't really care that much but it is kind of weird how it sounds literally exactly like a Dyson vacuum cleaner let's say you're in comfort mode so in comfort mode auto start stop is enabled but an easy way to get around that because a lot of people don't like auto start stop easiest way to get around it is just have the climate control on you don't even have to have the AC going but if the climate control is on auto start stop will not turn on even if it's at its lowest setting which is this setting auto start stop will not turn on so if you're a person that really hates auto start stop or if you have like a loud exhaust you don't want it to keep turning on and off and stuff like that just leave your climate control on all the time and you'll never have to worry about auto start stop ever in a new GTI another interesting quirk I noticed in my ownership of driving this car is let's say uh, let's say we're driving right we're just driving normal and then we pull up to a parking spot and we put it in park right so we go down here come to a stop put it in park you can see the parking brake did not apply automatically 
So it's really weird. So sometimes it will apply itself, sometimes it won't. Normally when you press park really fast, like literally right as you come to a stop or maybe even slightly before you come to a stop, then it'll automatically apply the parking brake. But if you come to a stop, sit there for a little bit and then put in park, it won't apply the parking brake automatically. So I don't know if that's, it's supposed to be like that, but I just felt, felt like that was kind of an interesting cork. All right guys, and for this final cork, as far as driving the car is concerned, I wanna talk about the paddle shifters. So the paddle shifters are interesting in the GTI. I really like them. So let's say we put it in sport mode here. So now we're in sport, just on the shifter, not in the actual drive mode. And we go manual first gear, right? So right now we're technically in manual mode, but if we hit red line, it'll automatically upshift anyway. Other thing is let's say you're driving in uh, third gear or whatever, and you wanna do like a third gear pull from like 3000 RPM. So you floor it, it'll automatically downshift for you. It won't let you um, like go throughout the power band. So you see here, we're in third gear. I don't wanna be too low in the RPM in case it actually does work, but if I floor it, see it automatically downshifted to second gear that's in manual mode so the paddle shifters really aren't actually manual mode but one thing that's really cool is let's say you're roll racing since it automatically upshifts for you all you have to do is go to the speed that you want to race at hold the downshift paddle and it'll downshift to the lowest gear possible for that speed and then you just floor it and the car will do the rest so there's pluses and minuses to that I kind of like it the way my Mustang is to where it's actually full manual mode but at least it makes roll racing really easy. Then if you wanna get out of manual mode, the easiest way to do it is just to hold the upshift paddle and you can see it put us back in drive. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed the video going over the corks and things I've noticed in my ownership of this 2022 Mark 8 GTI. If you guys have any suggestions in the comments or anything you'd like to say about uh, the corks or something I said incorrectly, definitely let me know in the comments. Please give it a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.